Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. This is a sample video for our latest podcast, episode 101. We interviewed the founder and chairman of the Tofurky Company, Seth Tibbet. Incredible man with a big heart and a fascinating story. We discuss Seth's new book, In Search of the Wild Tofurky. How a business misfit pioneered plant-based foods before they were cool. Such a cool book title. We enjoy all of our special guest interviews on this show, and yet this was one of our favorites. And we know you're going to love it too. To listen to the full episode, you can join us on Patreon, which is linked in the description below. Hope you enjoy this, and thanks for listening. You'd be hard-pressed to find a vegan who hasn't tasted or at least heard of Tofurky. From deli slices and burgers to sausages and roasts, Tofurky is a vegan household brand name. My mouth's watering just hearing those products. <laughs> but what many people don't know is the fascinating story behind Tofurky, which started way back in 1980. It sounds like a Hollywood movie, but this is actually a true story. After making from scratch tempeh to share with friends and family, 30-year-old teacher, naturalist and hippie Seth Tibbet found a Tofurky on $2,500. To save money, he built and lived in a tree house for seven years. You know you're vegan when. <laughs> <laughs> Since those early years of struggling to grow the business and make ends meet, Tofurky now ships products around the world and has estimated sales of $40 million a year. Wow. And the mission driving this plant-based pioneer was simple provide healthy, eco-friendly, tasty protein to the world. Today we're joined by the founder and chairman of the Tofurky company, Seth Tibbet, to hear more about his fascinating story, entrepreneurship, and discuss his new book, which we absolutely loved reading and highly recommend, In Search of the Wild Tofurky, How a Business Misfit Pioneered Plant-Based Foods Before They Were Cool. Seth, welcome to the show. It's an honor to have you. Uh, great to be here and uh, love to uh, explore Australia, one of our favorite uh, countries that we sell in and uh, happy to be here. Oh, fantastic. Congratulations on your new book, Seth. We absolutely in loved reading this. Um, huge understatement. It was fantastic. And to be honest with you, we thought, oh, we'll just flick through it just to prepare for this interview. And we were hooked and we read the whole thing. Cover to cover. You're a great storyteller. Oh, well, thank you. You know, it's been a really um, fun life and a fun story to write about. And I've had so much help from so many generous, kind people along the way that, you know, everybody thinks a lot of times that business is this mean dog eat dog. I don't think dogs even eat dogs, do they? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's this sort of mean spirited, I'm going to get everything that I can for myself. And forget about you. But um, to me, you know, business has been uh, trying to construct win-wins for everybody, you know, whether it's employees or retailers or distributors, you want to really, um, for a sustainable relationship, you know, it's got to work for everybody. And so I really think the win-win and just the unbelievable generosity that um, people bestowed on me is just so I'm so thankful and grateful for and trying to repay that back you know now that uh, I'm at the other end of the spectrum and I love working with nonprofits and startup businesses and you know I'm thrilled to see veganism exploding all around the world so yeah. it's yeah. a great time to be alive it sure is and we've got so much to talk about to delve into um it, it's interesting actually you said you've had so much fun and that was one of the things we wanted to mention is that this book was really funny and we were both reading it independently and we kept laughing out loud to each other and, and you know, saying, oh, this is such an entertaining read. Like constantly. I haven't, I don't recall laughing that much reading a book ever. Yeah. So you're not only a great storyteller, but you're very, very funny. You're a great writer. Um, and in addition to being a great story, it's also a very helpful business resource. It's like you've got a, a little gem there for anyone starting a new business. So we highly recommend this. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. You know, I mean, but it's good that you picked out fun because that is one of the key components, certainly, of Tofurky. When you have a product named Tofurky, you know, it just brings a smile to people's face when they first hear it and has, you know, the name uh, of a product is really uh, an important thing to have as a good name. And I, as you'll see in reading the book, um, for many years, 
it wasn't like I completely tried to keep fun out of the marketing, but when it came to Tofurky, it's just like fun took over kind of complete control. And we started having, you know, these contests of like, draw the Tofurky in the wild. What does a Tofurky in the wild look like? And, you know, um, just really embracing the fun because as a species, I think we're the otters of the universe and we, we love to laugh and we love to have a good time. And when you share a joke or a laugh with somebody, it's really memorable. You know, you can remember jokes, but you forget other stuff that you should remember uh, <laughs> all the time. So um, laughter is, is one of the key points and key beliefs of us here in Tofurky land. And we try and embrace that in the culture of the company and the marketing as well. But, you know, it's a fun place to work and we love having a good time while we're doing our work because you spend so much time with your mates when you're working. Why not have a good laugh every now and then? It really makes the day shorter. Absolutely. And we want to thank you so much for the laughs that you gave us while we were reading the book. And it's important because, you know, sometimes uh, there are other books, you know, like Vistopia by vegan psych psychologist Claire Mann. I'm not sure whether you're aware of it, Seth, but, you know, she talks about the anguish of being vegan, living in a non-vegan world where we're aware of this systematic cruelty towards animals. And sure. it can uh, it can be quite uh, overwhelming sometimes, especially when we try to share this information with uh, non-vegan family and friends and perhaps it's not received as we would ideally like it to be. And so I think something like your book that can bring a smile to people's faces at the very least, but I'm sure they'll be belly laughing like we were on so many occasions. I think that uh, is a much needed book. Yeah. Uh, it creates that balance, doesn't it? It does. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 You do need to have the balance because as you point out, you know, there's plenty of anguish when you wake up and you see what's happening in the world with animals and with our environment and our health um, also. So we really um, hold those key thoughts in mind when we're creating products and that's why we're in business, you know, is to help alleviate the suffering of animals and people and the planet. Yeah. So we have that, but at the same time, you know, coming at it from a fun angle and having some laughs along the way is like a, it levels the playing field and it, you don't come off as pretentious, you know, the, the more kind of self-effacing and, you know, I'm just no different than you. Everybody is in, we're all in this together. It's really, um, I think, a good way to live um, and to really, we want to attract people and into our um, club, if you will, or into veganism. We want to make veganism like a fun, not a somber all anguish thing we want to be aware of these issues but you know life is short and uh, we want to make sure that along the way we have an enjoyable ride because it's going to be over all too soon <laughs> yeah well said truth be told we actually had a look on your website to see if there were any jobs available <laughs> we thought, this yeah. is a man we want to work for <laughs> oh yeah well we'd love to have you here but i don't know if we could understand aussie talk <laughs> yeah we're a little we're a little That's weird down about, mate. <laughs> we have to have an interpreter on staff to really understand half the stuff you guys say I think. 